Hi, welcome to the video lectures from Shivananda Sharma Memorial Abhi College. This is an ISR initiative. Shivananda Sharma Memorial Abhi College is one of the premier institutions run by the prestigious Abhi group of institutions. We have come up with a unique initiative to engage students at the time of this unforeseen medical emergency caused by the corona outbreak. As a socially responsible institution, we would like to connect academically with students to make good the losses caused. In this connection, I Gokul C of the Department of BBA has posted a video on the subject Banking Regulations and Operations and the topic Different Types of Customers. Please watch the video till the end, like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and please share this video with your peer groups. Thank you. Hi, today we will be discussing a very important chapter in income tax called Profits and Gain from Business and Profession, in short PGBP. This is the first part of the video. We will be discussing only the theoretical aspects today and then in the next video we will be talking about the formats and how to do the problems. It's a very important chapter from an examination perspective because we get one question from business and one question from profession. So please listen to the lecture very attentively. Let's define what is business. Well, Income Tax Act, uh, the section 2, subsection 3 of Income Tax Act defines business as any trade, commerce, manufacturing activity or any adventure or concern in the nature of trade, commerce and manufacture. In simple terms, it means any trading activity, any commercial activity, any manufacturing activity, the income that you derive out of it is called a business income. Okay. Now, it is not necessary that you should be consistently doing that business, even if you have done the business only once and you get income out of it even then the, that business has to be charged uh, as a business income so that is what the last sentence says neither reputation nor continuity of similar transactions is necessary after defining business let us move ahead and try to find out what profession profession may be defined as a vocation a job requiring some thought skill and special knowledge like that of a chartered accountant a lawyer a doctor an engineer an architect etc so profession refers to those activities where the livelihood is earned by the persons through their intellectual or manual skills. And it means to say that if a person earns his livelihood by using his intelligence and some special skills, then that person is called a professional. Now that includes chartered accountants, lawyers and doctors. But please remember, I told you in the earlier class as well, that if these people are employed in a particular industry as employees then the income that they get from that will be considered as salary and it will not be counted as business uh, as professional income only if they have their own practice would they be considered as professional gains or professional incomes now what is vocation vocation is is the income that the artist derive artists could be people who are into movies music etc and they use their artistic skills and they earn, their, they earn their livelihood. So the income that these artists uh, get is called vocation and vocation is also a part of professional income. Now I hope I have made the definitions clear of what is business and what is profession. Now, what is the second, the first part, what is profits and what is gains? Profits in simple terms, in all accounting terms, we know that it is excess of income over expenditure and that pretty much remains the same for us in income tax as well. Gains. Now, if you ask me what exactly is the difference between a profit and a gain, uh, there is no clear cut definition, but the way we look at it is if you run a business on a daily basis, you make purchases, you make sales, the difference of whatever is the difference is what you call your profits. But without making a purchase, without making a sale, you still make some profits. That is called a gain. For example, uh, you bought an asset and you sold it for a higher amount. Technically, it is not an operating activity. That is not your regular course of work. Your asset got appreciated to that extent. 
So whatever that percentage of appreciation that you have is called a gain. Strictly it is not profit. So that is why it is called profits and gains from business or profession. What are losses? That is excess of expenditure over income. So why am I talking about losses here? And when the chapter says profits or gains from business or profession, please do not be under the impression that we talk only about profits or gains. If the business has losses, then we have to include that as well. Moving on. Well, types of business, income tax divides business into two. One is a manufacturing business, that is conversion of raw materials into finished goods. And trading businesses. A trading businesses have speculative and non-speculative. Uh, basically, trading business is where you don't manufacture anything. You buy from somebody and you sell it to somebody else. So that process is called a trading business. Now, who are professionals? Advocates, doctors, chartered accountants, tax consultants, tutors, not teachers. Uh, tutors are people who run a coaching center. Okay. Now, from an examination perspective, we get questions either uh, if, the, uh, if a professional is a doctor or an advocate or a chartered accountant. So these three are the important uh, professions that we need to take care of it from an examination perspective. Okay. Moving on, uh, the charging section under Income Tax Act is Section 28. So what is the charging section? Charging section is where it, say it defines what are the business incomes and what exactly are called business incomes okay very clearly they have stated there are 12 heads under which the income tax act defines what is a uh, income under business or profession okay first is very clear self-explanatory profits or gains from any business or profession very clearly it is mentioned any profits that you gain or uh, from any business or profession very straightforward explanation first one second is any compensation or other payment due to or received by the business. Now what does it mean if the government gives you any compensation for any loss or something or uh, if your building is moved due to some requirement of the government then the government gives you some compensation for that that whatever the income that you gain out of it is also called a business income. Then the third is if you are doing some business on behalf of some members who are into the same profession that is also called a income from business or profession okay fourth is if you are into export business and you receive certain incentives from the government okay the government sometimes gives incentives to to uh, motivate you to do more exports so if you get that whatever the income that you gain out of it is also called a is also considered as a business income. Duty entitlement scheme is sometimes what happens. You have some duty, you have some some rights, some duties. Uh, what do you say? Um, it is like a uh, you hold a card saying that yes, you can do some business with a duty card, and if you transfer that to somebody else, then that becomes part of your duty entitlement scheme. Okay, so. I don't know how relevant they are in the modern in, in this scenario because there are no much businesses post liberalization which deal with this but if they are there they also come come into it okay then any profits on duty free replacement certificate duty free replacement certificate is where the government gives you a certificate and says that you don't have to do any you don't have to pay any duty because of certain incentives that you have got from it so if you've got any profit from that so that income also becomes part of your uh, business income then uh, if you get any non-cash benefits from any business or profession non-cash benefit is called perquisites so the easiest way of looking at it is instead of taking cash you tell them you pay me in gold or give, you give me a car instead of paying me in cash that is considered a perquisite so even if it's a non-cash expenditure because it is in, this, in the light of business, it becomes part of your business income. Then, uh, if you are running a partnership firm, if you are paying any interest to the partners, uh, interest on capital, if you have, if you are paying any commission, if you are paying any salaries to any partners, that also becomes part of your business income. Uh, the ninth one is. Uh, if you have a business know-how 
if you have an intellectual property right okay uh, look at the definition is quite interesting if you read the ninth one it says any sum received for not carrying out any business what well, it does not say carrying out any business it's very clear for not carrying out any business that means to say you have a business a who has some know how and he holds and he knows how to do he has a copyright or a patent about uh, on on some product uh, b comes the business b comes and says please don't do this business uh, in this area wherever the geographical area is please don't do it and this guy says no how can i how can i stop myself from doing the business because that's my livelihood then uh, b says doesn't matter whatever is your copyright or your patent is i can pay you more than that please withdraw that pay, patent i am going to pay you much more than what the patent is going to pay you for the next 3 4 or 5 years don't do that business so if this agreement is reached and and he gets some money from the competitor for not carrying on any business that also becomes part of your business income okay that's quite important not carrying out any business then any amount received under keeman insurance policy what is keeman insurance policy well in any business there are certain people who are very important to run the business for example they may not be the owner of the business but they know in and out of the business and such a person it's very important for such person to be part of the uh, to be part of your business it could it could happen in any organization isn't it Uh, many a times you feel you feel the void if a person who is extremely efficient has left that organization you feel that void there and you feel that yes if that person was there things would have been much more easier such a person is called a keeman so what happens many a times employees don't want employers don't want to lose such employees and they have they take a insurance in the name of that keeman and uh, any amount that they received uh, that they received from the insurance company for any keeman insurance policy becomes part of business income why because keeman is part of the business so anything that to do with them any insurance anything to do with them becomes part of the business income now generally what happens i have written movie stars here the reason is many a times when the filmmakers start making a movie they insure the lives of their stars the reason is it is because of them that the movie goes on to the floor and the audience are going to come into the theaters so because of this uh, they generally insure insure them and any income that they get out of that insurance also becomes part of the business income then uh, if any sum is received on account of any capital asset destroyed or demolished as per the clause does not include intangible assets i think this is very similar to what i told earlier earlier you have a building in which you, you have your own building in which you carry on your own business uh, and the government says we need to depo- demolish this building for road construction or something and the building is demolished and the government gives you a compensation or or gives you a building somewhere else to carry on the business so any income that you gain out of it also becomes part of so the building is nothing but your capital asset isn't it so this is not a capital gain so anything that you gain out of it becomes a uh, cap uh, become uh, becomes a, a business income okay then income from speculation specul what is speculation speculation is something which you are anticipating and not exactly spending money on it i uh, will just talk about a small example of speculation well from an examination perspective not very important unless we deal with income from other sources but this is more of a good to know okay okay uh, let us quickly talk about what is speculation speculation means uh, it's more of a gambling gambling in the sense the person the businessman anticipates and fixes a price and says that okay i am going to buy this product at so and so price i'm going to sell it at so and so price and the difference of that is is going to be my profit now having said that let us take the example of a vegetable vendor or a fruit vendor what does he do he calls up the farmer on one day and tries to find out what is the uh, rate of a particular fruit the farmer says it's it's uh, 20 rupees per kilo and uh, he says okay if that is the case i would require about 1000 kgs of that particular fruit 
and he says and he doesn't send the money he only says okay there is a it's only a contract to uh, pay so he says fine and he takes he the the farmer agrees and he says don't bring it to me bring it directly to the market and from there i can sell it so what happens the the farmer gets the product from his source to the place of to the point of sale and day 2 day 1 is what they had the agreement day 2 the price has increased from 20 rupees to 21 rupees okay so what what does he do the so the farmer would have sold it at 21 rupees had it had he had he uh, bought it on day 2 luckily he has bought it on day 1 because of which he has got 20 rupees now the difference is 21000 uh, so 21 into 1000 21000 the different the, the difference that he makes is 1000 rupees technically he has not purchase anything he has not sold anything it is basically he has speculated that okay i just made a a fair deal instead of buying today i i instead of instead of buying today i bought it yesterday because of which i had a gain of 1000 rupees now this is very a very very uh, simple example of speculative markets speculation market itself is a very big chapter we talk about shares and and other things but as of now for our understanding this is simplest example that i could think of as far as speculation is concerned i think uh, uh one more very important thing that we need to understand is now those 12 head, heads will tell you which are the business incomes that we, uh, which are the business incomes uh, cons- which are the income which are which are considered under pgbp those 12 heads now let us also talk about the ones which are not considered as business business or professional gains the first one is rental income in the case of dealer in property so what does it mean there is a dealer there is a house what do we call a house broker or a house dealer what does he do he will get his income only by getting the getting the client the the, the tenant and the landlords together and making an agreement so if he is getting some money out of it if he says i i would want one month of rent as my commission whatever the income that he gets out of it he is not considered as business income ideally it should be considered as a, as a business income because that is his main core business he earns his livelihood out of it but due to some reason they do not consider, they do not consider the rent which is which he receives as a business income it is still considered as income from house property so that doesn't come under the purview of business income second is same way if he is a dealer in shares and if he is getting any dividend on the shares that doesn't come un- as part of the um, business income that becomes income from other sources i repeat if there is a share broker and if he is getting dividend on the shares of certain companies then it becomes income from other sources but one very important point that you have to remember here is please remember that any dividend from an indian company is tax free now here we are referring only to dividend which he gets from foreign companies third is winning from lotteries etc those don't become part of uh, business income they all become part of your other sources well i hope i have made the concepts clear for you i think we'll be going ahead with the formats and other things when we uh, start our next video and uh, Yeah, I think thank you for watching this and in case of any questions you can get back to me on this. Thank you so much.